Welcome back Guardians to another video, slightly different, I wanted to do a review on the Xbox One Elite controller, um, I needed permission from my sponsored controller company to do this and you know I've been waiting back to hear what they say and approach them with the idea before I could make this video and they were totally okay with me, I don't want to say endorsing the Elite controller because I'm not paid by Microsoft, I'm not doing this for their benefit i'm just doing this because i believe in the product i use it i think it's amazing i can barely use any other controller now um, except for my controller mods controller actually is the only other comparable thing to this controller and i'll get into that in a little while um, but this controller is incredible and i want to share it with you guys and let you know that it is worth the money that it costs if you can afford it if you can't afford it then obviously it's not worth it but you know, everything it can do is everything you would need to be a comfortable, good gamer. And I'm, this is strange to me because I've never really been into modded controllers in any way, shape or form or custom controllers. I've just used a normal controller my entire life. And the only thing that I took a risk with was the controller mods. And controller mods have these little buttons on the back of the controller, as you can see here. Which is what I've always wanted to try, but paddles that come down the middle of here are really off-putting when I'm trying to hold the controller so I've never really tried it but once I got into controller mods and I found out they had these buttons it made that a, a, a hell of a lot easier to actually play and the great thing about where these buttons are placed is that they're the exact same paddles on the Elite controller in the exact same place except there's an extra paddle as well so it's an easy transition for me to go from controller mods to the Elite controller but um, if you can't afford the Elite controller, you can always check out controller mods. I'll leave the link in the video description below. I'm endorsing them because I do believe in their product too, and I'm actually sponsored by them. So if you wish to go over and check them out, the link will be in the video description. You can use the code SNOW for a percentage off and discount. But let's get into the Elite controller and why I love it. So first and foremost, it's delivered to you like this. Well, it's in a box, obviously, but it's in one of these containers. And then you open the container. And it's actually really well packaged where you've got the controller, which is on at the moment because my Xbox is on. So I'm going to show you some stuff. And then you have all the attachments that are down here. And I'm going to get into the attachments and show you me changing them and how easy it is in just a little while. First and foremost, one of the most important things about this for me is the preset button, which is in the center here. As you can see, it's got one and two. And all you do is flick that backwards and forwards. And you could set whatever controls you want on one and two. So for one, I have my controller set up for Call of Duty. So the four paddles that I would have on the back, obviously I've took two out to show you how they click, they clip in. Um, I have like jump here and crouch on these two. And then I have LB and RB on these two that are there. So that I can activate specialists for grenades with ease without having to take my thumb off the stick. And that's what it's good for. So I can jump with this and move my stick at the same time because normally you'd have to take your finger off to press A which means you can turn while in midair and have better reaction times and better control over what you're doing and that is what's great about it but I have the preset 2 set up to Fallout at the moment um, to have again jump and crouch but over here I'd have Vats and Pip-Boy so I can just hit those quickly to get into them um, but you know you can just change them on the fly and I'm going to show you in just a little while how you do that. The other things that come with this controller are the on the actual pad itself. Obviously the paddles as you can see. Now the paddles are very very in line with where you would hold the controller anyway. So it's a natural hand grip like this. So you've got your finger on the trigger up here. And you've got this finger on the top paddle and this finger on the bottom paddle. And they're perfectly shaped and the perfect length where you don't even need to be like gripping them like this. It's just where your natural fingers go and you just tap them like so. It's really, really intuitive, really, really natural to your hand. And that's great. And obviously the other two would be on the other side as well. The only other things that I can talk about on the pad are these little green switches here. And what these are are controllable trigger stops so for right now they're in the off position so I have to press like well I can press it all the way down like this and you have to press it all the way down to be able to get it so if I click it on you can see that that is how far it goes instead of all the way down which means basically that when you press the trigger to fire your gun you don't have to press it down as far to be able to start shooting 
which means that you save in a, like fractions of a second but if you're good with your reactions and all that trigger stops help dramatically um, so I usually just have them both on I only really need the fire one on instead of the aim one but I just put them both on just because of my OCD and I have to have them equal so they're very very useful as well because most custom pads that you have you have to unscrew the trigger and take the trigger stop off but these are just literally a button where you flick it on and flick it off and it just helps maintain a better game in general so that's everything actually on the pad that you can well that that's apparent then you have the sticks oh i'm upside down <laughs> the sticks and the d-pad now i've just accidentally hit my b button but i'll get into that so over here we have the d-pad which can easily just be taken off like that it's literally that simple they're all magnetized and they can all be interchangeable so if i wanted to use the little plate which is like this you can see that on the back it's got the actual you know the d-pad thing and all you do is that i'm trying to do this without looking at it is just line it up that's not even on properly it's just stuck on by the magnet yeah so i can see now and there you go it's as simple as that so now i have a d-pad which is great for fighting games and stuff and you know if you want to take it off it's just literally that simple you just remove it like that and then you can put the other one back on if you wish to literally that intuitive now the sticks themselves come in different heights and different shapes so at the moment i've got the two normal low ones on for the xbox with the 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 stick that goes in like that like a like a u i don't know what they're called um but you also have longer versions of those so if I just take that, I'm going to show you right here. I use this on my right stick all the time, the longer one, because usually I use a control freak like this to hire that one up so I've got better control. But this one is literally just this. So look, I go boop and pull it off. And then I put the other one on. And as you can see, I now have one stick higher than the other, which just saves me from having control freaks on because usually control freaks are just a little bit too high. So I'm having to stretch my bum. But this is the perfect height for me to just hold the pad perfectly. And also, they, well, there's two of those high stick ones. So if you want another high stick, you can. There's two of the low stick ones. But they also give you the domed PlayStation ones. So if you want to put that on your left trigger, it's literally just take it off. Actually, I'll do that again because I think I was off camera. So you just boop, put it off and then put the other one on. And there you go. It's that interchangeable. And, you know, I could do this and shake it. And they just stay on nothing comes off so you know it's totally up to you how you want to customize it and what you want to use definitely an awesome controller in my opinion and then obviously the paddles on the back you sort of have to slot them in so now i'm going to have to try and do this in a weird manner which one's this that one is going to be that one there okay so these are what they look like and you have to sort of push it in like this so it has to be flat onto the controller and then click it over and there you go that is in there i'll try that one more time with the other one so i'm going to try and do this backwards and upside down is that right yeah there we go and it's in and that's me doing it without having any control over it and just looking at it backwards in a camera and it's really that easy to actually do that and that's that's incredible so now I'm going to show you what you could do with the buttons. So, cut the tape. So as you can see right now, I am on my dashboard. I'm on the new Windows 10 dashboard. And all you need is the app called Xbox Accessories. Now, I already have this downloaded. You just have to find it in the store and actually download it. And you click into it. And you need to have your controller connected by the wire that they give you. Now, the wire itself that comes with it is a long, long wire, as you can see. And it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. But it has also got like this um, this material around it where it's not just a normal wire. It's going to be more durable. It's not going to fray. It's it's just a, a great actual thing to have. Now, I find that this is actually a little bit stiff to get into the hole. <laughs> um, but once you get it in there, it's pretty much safe and it charges. Um, it, it can be a bit awkward, but sometimes it doesn't. So anyway, we're going to go into the Xbox Accessories Guide, as you're going to see. Connect the controller to get started. I have. And then you get this section here with configure and more options. So we go into configure. And as you can see, I actually have saved 
my own presets as FPS and Fallout. And I can go up and down like this and, and you can see that the buttons change. So for Fallout, I have the right stick, which is that version of Crouch. Um, y to jump. And then all I have to do is flick the switch back over. And I have A and B as jump and crouch for normal FPSs. Um, obviously, you can then go and change it to anything you want. They have some new setups, um, some new setups, some old setups for all the games, Gears of War, Forza. But if you want to make one, you just go to new configuration, name it whatever you want. And then you go into it and you can edit it. So you've got button mapping, sticks, triggers and vibration. So I'm just going to have a quick brief look over the sticks, triggers and vibration. So you can go into your left stick and you can change how quick that actually responds to your movement. Now I don't change these because I feel like if I change it too much it's really going to mess up my game because I know how I'm playing with my sticks. But you can have them with a delay if you wish. At the moment you see like you could go like this woo and it shows you how quick you respond. So now if I go to instant you can see that it's a lot quicker and I'm doing literally the same motion that I was doing. You can have smooth and they all just differ slightly. So it's just totally up to you and what you want on your sticks. And you can set your left stick to one thing and your right stick to another. So if you like your sensitivity to feel a little bit more under control with your fire, you don't want to have instant with the right stick. But if you want to be able to move and stuff with your left stick, instant might be good for you. But I haven't touched these, so I don't know them in depth. But these are things that you can do. Now your triggers, you can set to be whatever you wish them to be. So you don't even need the trigger stops activated on your controller. You can turn them off and then change these to the perfect amount that you have to press them for them to respond. Again, I haven't gone into that because I feel like the trigger stops are just good enough for what I want them to be. So I don't bother with those. You can actually turn up and down the vibrations and how much your pad vibrates. I just left it on max. I do actually feel like it's too much at times, so I may just decide to turn those down. And you can even change the Xbox button brightness. So I'm hoping you might be able to see this. Probably not because it's white. But if I was to just bring this down, all the way down, all the way down. No, nah, you can't really tell the difference. I think, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you can't really tell the difference. But it does change how bright it is in itself. Um, we also can swap the sticks. So it will automatically change the right stick to the left stick and the left stick to the right stick. Invert your axis and swap the triggers. And you can just do all this with a single button press, which is incredible. Um, and then you can go to the button mapping. Now, the button mapping themselves, you've got the controller button here. So the top section that you pick here is the button on your pad so if you want to change your a button um, to not be the a button anymore you can then go through and change that to i don't know let's just say for instance right bumper now i know a lot of people in halo use right bumper to jump um, so i'm just using it as an example so you could use your a button to be the right bumper which is strange to say but that's what happens but you know most people won't ever change a b x and y so the best things to do is change the paddles. So we go down and you can see here, you got upper left paddle, upper right paddle, which are these two here. And the lower ones are here that point down. So you just literally click upper left paddle and then you set it to whatever button you want it to be. So if you want it to be A button to jump, you can press that. If you want it to be left click, left clicking your stick, um, your left stick clicking in, you can just change it to that. And you can literally change it to anything you want it to be on the pad which is just incredible. You can even have them as unmapped, but I just would rather just take the paddle out instead of not um, having anything mapped. Once you have your custom set up, I'm just gonna leave it as that for now. You just go to done, and then you can save it to your slot one or slot two, which is this button backwards and forwards. I'm not gonna save it, because obviously I have mine already there. Um, and I'm just gonna delete that, because I don't want it. And I'll go in and show you my FPS one. So you can see my FPS is saved to my slot 1, which means you can't save it again over slot 1. So you're not going to make a mistake and, and mess it up. Um, and then slot 2 is obviously my Fallout keys, as you can see. So it's very, very easy, very, very natural to just change the buttons without a single issue. I've only had one issue, and that was when the Xbox Accessories um, program just deleted itself off my hard drive. And I could not find it again on Xbox One until I upgraded to Windows 10 and then it just reappeared <laughs> randomly. So if that happens, 
that's just an issue with the Xbox and Xbox Store and not actually the Xbox Elite controller itself. Um, so yeah, I can't really think of a downfall for this pad. The un Okay, the only thing that I would say is a downfall is that it's a little bit heavy. Definitely a lot heavier than my um, controller mods controller. I could not think for the life of me then. Like this is probably about half the weight this is. But if you're used to an, a normal Xbox pad anyway with all the rumbling and stuff in, it's not that much heavier. It's a little bit heavier, but not that much. Um, if you're not worried about how heavy something is, that's great. And also as well, I forgot to mention because I just felt them. On the back here, you have actually grips where um, you know you get more grip. If your hands are sweaty, it will grip on there a lot easier, which I'm grateful for because I do get sweaty hands when I'm playing. So this is very, very um, just just built in and very awesome. And the thing is, is that it doesn't smell. I know that sounds funny, but when I used to buy things like grips to equip to around yourself you stick it on yourself they always used to smell after i'd used it because the sweat obviously didn't mix well with whatever they were made out of but these are just awesome i'm, I'm i can't think of any other downside other than it's a little bit heavy now i know this video has gone on a little bit longer but i wanted to give like a full breakdown in-depth review of this controller because it's something i love it's something i believe in it's something i feel like everyone who wants to be or take their gaming to the next level definitely needs to invest in because it's just feels so good and it just feels so natural to have so yeah i hope you enjoyed that i hope it helped you make a decision on buying it or not again this is not a sponsored ad for them it's just something i love and want to share with you guys so let me know if you have this controller what you think of it um do you think it's as good as i'm saying if you don't have it are you interested in it why are you interested in it what's stopping you buying it hit me in the comment section below i'm genuinely interested to see what you guys think and feel about this Hit the like button if you wish to, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.